In Dominia, Xamanarch felt a physical rush of excitement from a source he could not immediately identify. It was three nights later, while sifting through Ka's nightmares, that he found out the truth. I will drink of the Zanu, he determined, and magically teleported himself to the mooring tower of the DRS. Dominia, protection against Ka's magic, which would have taken months to accomplish for such a large object, would now take only weeks. Because of the reduction in Ka's power and the coinciding increase in the ambient mana available to the planet, the DRS Dominia would be ready to crush the other major very soon. No one in the vicinity had the knowledge or experience to contain or resist the potent magical force. Once in slow time, Zoresh continued to tap into the excess pool of magical energy granted to him by will of the inner circle and the power of the Zanu Stone. He accessed another spell from his repertoire. Even though the beams were exponentially slowed, light speed was still almost impossible to follow in flight. Zoresh was not attempting to dodge the probing lines of coherent light. He reached out his left hand and gathered the lingering beams. The spell he had cast allowed him not only to grasp the offensive laser beams, but also to sustain and move them through the air as if they were corporeal. Since the volley had risen at many angles from ground and shop level, the chronologically static beams that Zoresh held firmly radiated out at similar angles. Where Zoresh clutched the magically suspended bright blue and green rays, crackling white sparks showered down like a fountain. Of the 13 weapons that were used at that instant, Zoresh managed to secure only nine shots. Six were of the superior blue variety. Realizing that the methods that he was employing were draining an unbelievable amount of metaphysical resources, Zoresh decided to finish Jothendrum quickly. He performed a continuous series of spinning aerial maneuvers. Cartwheeling and somersaulting over the populated area, Zoresh whipped Jothendram with his magically ensnared and time-suspended heavy laser beams that protruded as salient searing streaks from the back of his left hand. The spoke-like lines of intensified visual radiation scorched through the townsfolk and burned deep marks into the ground. Most of the population of Jothendram wore little more than Kevlar armor, and this was proving to be less than effective. Fire erupted from a stall that was retailing fuels and lubricants. A plume of thick smoke rose suddenly like a dark, angry fist. The remaining townspeople were fleeing madly, abandoning items of great value and screaming in abject terror. As the surface and buildings were crisscrossed again and again with the ugly, burnt, linear signature of the attack, the death toll rose unrelentingly. Zoresh was almost enjoying himself. In the past, the limit of his ability with lasers was to arrest one beam and reflect it back at his opponent through its own path. Jothendram was ablaze and almost completely destroyed before relented Zoresh allowed his spell to end. He had slaughtered everyone who had not fled immediately into the surrounding wilderness. The self-appointed simplifier of his world decided that he needed to recharge and then wished to continue on his journey. Another two-thirds of this, thought Zoresh. It is difficult to believe.